Hi guys and gals, this is the last little snippet for chapter 20, all about standard cancer treatments. We're going to talk about um, standard treatments and upcoming standard treatments in this little video recording. So some of the standard treatments we have to treat cancer includes, hey, cutting the cancer out. This is known as removal or surgery. And these processes, generally speaking, are going to remove a liberal amount of surrounding tissues to also aid and help minimize the amount of a tumor spread or missing a cell a cancer cell, I should say. We also have radiation therapy. Generally speaking, these radiation therapies are going to focus on um, using um, radiation to minimize the tumor growth. They're going to be very targeted and not broad spectrum therapy. So we'll, the tumor itself will be irradiated, but not much of the surrounding tissue. Chemotherapy, on the other hand, is a very broad spectrum approach. It's going to affect all the tissues, all the cells of the body. And generally speaking, these treatments are going to focus on um, making it so that cells cannot reproduce quickly. So tumors that have lots of re quickly reproducing cells are going to be very heavily hit by chemotherapeutic drugs. But other tissues of our bodies that also have quickly reproducing tissues can be pretty heavily hit as well. And then finally, bone marrow transplants. These are typically going to be used for an, an individual has leukemia and needs to have a new set of hemocytoblast or myeloid stem cells inserted so that they can have non-cancerous blood cells produced. There are some new kids on the block though for cancer therapy and these are going to involve a lot of immune system applications. So we have immunotherapy where we take immune cells that have been genetically engineered to have the tumor's antigen and inject them in the patient's body and then activate their cytotoxic T cells to destroy the cancerous tumors. We also have passive immunotherapy. These passive immunotherapies are going to focus on injecting the patient with antibodies that, have, um, that are radioactively tagged. These antibodies are designed to stick to cancer antigens, so they will stick to the cancer tissues and then the radioactive tag will selectively destroy the cancer tissues. We also have P53 gene therapy. In these therapies, a retrovirus is inserted in the patient and this retrovirus will modify the patient's nuclear genome so that we can have it focus on only cancerous cells that have the mutated P53 gene. In other words, those cells that do not have the P53 gene are going to be targeted by the virus and destroyed by the virus, and then cells that do have the P53 gene will not be destroyed by our cancer or by our retroviral or genetically designed virus. And then finally, we have angiogenesis inhibition. Angiogenesis inhibition primarily is going to focus on making it so that the cancer can't have any blood vessels, arteries, or veins growing to supply needed nutrients to those cancerous cells. So if we can inhibit the growth of new blood vessels, the cancer will be starved of blood and potentially die off, or at least not grow. During this immunotherapy process, generally speaking, what we need to do is take some antigen-presenting cells from the patient. Those typically are going to be dendritic cells or macrophages from the patient. And then we can, will take those antigen-presenting cells and cause them to reproduce. And after reproducing the antigen presenting cells and having a high culture or a large population of them, we then genetically modify them so that they express tumor antigens on their surface and then we inject them back into the patient. And then those antigen presenting cells activate cytotoxic T cells which then selectively destroy off the tumors. So guys, gals, concept chat. If we look at these new therapies that involve um, cancer treatments or these new cancer treatments, which body system involves most of those therapies. Do we have the digestive, the respiratory, the urinary, the immune system, the reproductive system, or the cardiovascular system? Go ahead and pause the video and get me an answer. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is the immune system. D is our correct answer. And that's all we have for this chapter. If you have any questions about this material, please feel free to shoot me an email, post them in the class discussion board, or Swing by my office when you're on campus. Happy studies.